high in the Rocky Mountains, just outside of Leadville, Colorado, sits an abandoned resort called Interlaken. The Interlaken Resort, located on the south side of Twin Lakes, was considered Colorado's most beautiful resort in the late 1800s. But for nearly a century, the resort's buildings were left to crumble and its access road was cut off by a rising lake, leaving it alone and only accessible by trail or by boat. So come along with us as we hike along a stunning alpine lake to the Interlaken Ghost Resort. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a minute of Colorado Martini. So I have a harness on with my GoPro. I'm controlling it with the phone like this, which is really cool. I don't have a harness, but I am wearing underwear. <laughs> Mr. Martini up there, that pack he's got on is actually a water pack. So we've got, what, two liters in there? Yeah, you got two liters of ice water in my hydration pack, and I snuck three beers in your backpack. <laughs> I'd enjoy it when we get there. <sighs> What's your shirt say? Marty, whatever happens, don't ever go to 2020. <laughs> Or by a DeLorean. <laughs> or by a DeLorean. It's an easy hike. It's very level. There are a lot of rocks. We debated on uh, riding our bikes back here, but when I saw there were a lot of rocks, I I just didn't want to get flat because our time was kind of short. A lot of aspens. This is probably really pretty in the fall. Think about this. Being at 10,500 feet, we've been high all morning. <laughs> so there's a boat tour that you can take out here if you can't hike. Um, a very nice gentleman named DeVore runs it at this time. Um, we were going to take the boat tour out here, but our plans kind of changed and we weren't able to come out with DeVore. Um, but definitely check out his website. It's not that expensive. Um, I will put his information down in the description and on our website. And I highly recommend, um, that you take the boat out here. It's beautiful. Okay. Look at the shoreline. It's just beautiful. You want to go to the Interlaken? Interlaken, please. My name is Alfie. We're going to meet the hell down here. Oh my god, when you get him on an accent. 
<laughs> we'll be hearing this for hours. <laughs> Getting into the deep aspen forest. We got a nice creek to our right. Robin Hood and his men. Robin Hood and his men. I switch accent. Oh no, no. Now we're doing an English accent. <laughs> oh, and this pretty. Or just a sax. So this is Mount Albert. It's just totally surrounded by 14ers. 14ers are what we call here in Colorado mountains that are taller than 14,000 feet. It's a thing to try to climb all of them. And this is probably one of our more famous ones, Mount Albert. Because to be honest with you, I believe it's the tallest. So we're um, between 9,000 and 10,000 where I'm standing. And, um, and so you can see where the tree line is. So everything above this line, uh, trees can't grow. And that's what we call the tree line. Um, and that's why the peaks are so bald. It's not doesn't have to do with the terrain. It has to do with the air being so thin. What a pleasant place to to fish. So where we're going is out on that point there. So let's get back on the trail. Here we go. There it is. There it is. The abandoned resort is still a picturesque setting, but in its heyday, it had lush blue grass lawns, glistening water fountains, and beautiful summer gardens of native and cultivated flowers. Every week during the summer months, an orchestra would come from Leadville to play in the pavilion. The resort would host events and activities such as billiards, card games, picnics, horseback riding, hiking, skating, skiing, and sled rides. The Inter Laken Resort was originally built in 1879 and called the Lakeside Resort by John Staley. The millionaire, James Dexter, purchased the resort in 1883 for $3,250 and renamed the resort to the Interlaken and expanded the property. When you see the weathered buildings of the Interlaken rest in silence, you question how did this once magnificent resort come to be at the end of this lake and cut off from road access? Well, in the early 1970s, the Twin Lakes Storage Reservoir was constructed. The resort was placed on the National Historic Register in 1974 to protect the structures. Archaeologists searched through the site so that artifacts and clues to the resort's history would be revealed. The hotel and its buildings, along with Dexter's cabin, were moved roughly 150 feet to higher ground. All other artifacts associated with the site are now underwater. The hotel has several buildings 
such as an annex, external bathroom, billiards parlor, dance pavilion, stables, laundry, employees' quarters, blacksmith's shop, cow and chicken sheds, ice house, and a boathouse. But the only building that you can explore the inside of is the Dexter's cabin. You can still go inside and explore the Dexter family cabin. The Dexter cabin was built as a summer home in 1895 exclusively for the family. The building was modeled after a captain's house that Dexter admired in New England. Dexter died in 1899, and so did the resort. It was later reduced to a boarding house until World War I. After the war, the building stood empty. One of Dexter's descendants purchased the property in the 1930s. He maintained the summer house but the rest of the buildings fell into disrepair. So I'm pretty sure that's DeVore with one of his tours. He comes out around 10 o'clock and uh, it's around that time. Um, so he has a nice little pontoon boat. I will put a link to his tours um, down in the description and at coloradomartini.com. So make sure you uh, check out the boat tours if you come out this way. So you can go up to the tower. I took pictures of the door for you. So, so they had the modern conveniences here. A bathtub, sink, it's probably the Badoo. It's probably the lit. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Mm. I would cook on the stove here. We have a, a book for you to sign in. <laughs> Oh, I actually didn't get into this room. There's several rooms. That's where the fire, the exhaust where the fireplace used to be. So there's no camping out here. Just hiking. You can canoe out here. And, or take the tour boat. So definitely a really nice place to just, you know, sit and have lunch and relax and before you hike back. So definitely bring a picnic lunch out with you.
Or beef jerky and beer. Or, or beef jerky. Yeah, he's claiming he put a six pack in my backpack. <laughs> Those guys rented boats. So it took him about an hour to come out. There's Dexter's cabin, all the other outbuildings. There's the actual lodge itself. And look at this view, isn't this gorgeous? See a lot of water damage. There was a lot of vandalism that happened. After Dexter died, the um, resort just wasn't this first class resort anymore. It became a boarding house for a while. And then it was empty for decades. And, uh, you know, vandals kind of took over. So there's been a lot of restoration that's happened. So. Uh, there's interpretive signs all over. But we're here in July and the beginning of July and the wildflowers are starting to bloom. And so it's just like really, really nice and we can just kind of walk around. Well, that might be bear poop right there. I'm not sure. I wonder what that was back there. Looks like a lodge, large area. Eating or uh, entertainment, maybe. Maybe it's the theater. So if you come here off season, you're not gonna run into so many people. Um, fall, it's absolutely gorgeous out here because of all the aspen trees. So everybody we pass keeps like laughing at Mr. Martini and I'm not sure why. <laughs> Marty, any ideas? <laughs> Don't have a clue. You get some funny looks there. <laughs> funny looks. Probably my handsome good look. Oh, must be. <laughs> so it's very important that you have coordinates before you come out here. I'll put my coordinates down in, uh, on our website or in the description. But kind of look at the parking lot I'm in. You'll, it can be real deceiving and you might end up in the wrong parking lot um, because of the signage. So really follow the road all the way until you see a large parking lot and it should say Inner Lake and Trailhead. And you want to be right next to the lake. Um, so we did park in a different parking lot because it did say that it was the Continental Divide Trail, but it was further back 
even though we will run into the Continental Divide Trail and the Colorado Trail um, on this route. But just be warned that the road coming out here is very rocky and very rough. Um, so if you're in a two-wheel drive or a low, um, a low vehicle, you're going to have a little bit of issues. Make sure to catch all our videos on the beautiful Rocky Mountain State of Colorado.